What is happening, folks? Welcome back to the Test Lake. It is early Saturday morning. Uh, we got some overcast playing to our advantage. You might be able to see it the screen there, but yeah, uh, looks like we're, the storm just missed us. But uh, anyway, we're back out here this morning on the Test Lake. Yeah. Todd's back from Wisconsin. I guess you had a good time up oh. there, right? Yeah, as awesome. you can see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. <laughs> so uh, with us today, uh, we actually got a new lure to try out, something I've never actually used before. And what we have for you guys today are these. These are, this one's out of the package, but these are the Panther Martin Hula Runners. Panther Martin Hula Runners. So <laughs> I've never fished with anything like this before. It looks extremely interesting to me. It's kind of a combination between a spinner bait Kind of got the head of you know like a umbrella rig and then the skirt of a jig mm. really an interesting design but yeah I, i'm curious to see what it does yeah me too i mean the other thing interesting on here i think is is that the uh the, like you said the paddle tail swim bait there almost looks kind of like a fluke um geez if that one comes off i think you can always just tie another one on so i mean hey we'll yeah see what like happens it. tonight but um yeah I'm interested. I just honestly, I was just browsing online. These things caught my eye, and I know nothing about them. But uh, I guess we'll know a little bit more after we fish with them. Yeah, since we don't know a thing about these and we've never used them before, I'll just read you what it says on the back of the package here. It says the hula skirt provides a large, colorful profile, uh, while the blade provides plenty of flash. That might be a problem with no sun yeah. out right now. But. <laughs> Um, the weedless inline spinner features an enticing hula skirt and realistic minnow head body. It works well in saltwater for redfish, uh, sea trout, snook, striped bass, and flounder. Yeah. It is also a very productive, or it's also a very productive lure in freshwater for catching bass. Which is good walleye and northern pike. So you could have used this up in Wisconsin yeah. too. Yeah. Stupid me. Uh, it says weedless hook allows the spinner to be dragged through the reeds, uh, weeds, and other fishy vegetation. Uh, the free swinging hook prevents fish from gaining leverage and breaking free, so strikes stay on. So there it is. Uh, of course, there'll be a link in the description below if you guys are interested in picking one of these up. But um, we're gonna go ahead and tie these bad boys on, yeet them out there, and see what we can pull in today with uh, with the hula runner. That's gonna do it for me with the uh, hula runner. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I don't know, man. Um, we'll see how Todd does with it. I don't know if that was a, a fish or a, or a rock or whatever it was I just set the hook on, but I lost it. And yeah, now I gotta go tie something else on it. I'm going back to one that I've used plenty of times before, the Six Cents Crush 100X. My opinion, as always, is invalid. Alright guys, number one, hula runner. See if Brandon would have kept his lure, he'd have something like this. Here's the aftermath. Maybe in 2021 the fish will bite again.
guys. Brilliant sized fish, but I'll take it. Alright, I'll take it. Alright guys, scorecard time with the Panther Martin Hula Runner. Alright, first on the category list is price. How is it priced in comparison to other products of similar nature? Well, for this one here, um, I think I got this one on Amazon, but I was just looking up. You can get it for Bass Pro, uh, Cabela's, even Dick Sporting Goods for $8.99. Not great, but not bad either though. Um, so for that one, um, I compare that to the, uh, the MEPS uh, Musky Killer. I mean, that's kind of the closest thing that I have to compare it to. Um, and the MEPS Musky Killer, I got that for $11.99. So yeah, not too, not too bad, honestly. So for that one there, I'm going to go right, uh, actually a little bit above average, believe it or not. I'm going to go with a four on price. I don't really have an opinion. Uh, <laughs> I lost mine about <laughs> eight casts into it. Um, uh, I'll, I'll call it average. Um, I, I think that sounds about right for an inline spinner bait. So I'll, I'll go three on that. Uh, next on the list here is function. Did it perform the way it was supposed to perform? Well, <laughs> yes and no. Um, I mean, there definitely was a learning curve with this. Um, the problem was the, uh, the, the blade. Um, you had to let it sink at least about a foot down and then you had to give it a good jerk to kind of get it, uh, the propeller to kind of, <laughs> or the blade start uh, propelling on it. So honestly, it, it, it did in some ways, in other ways it did not. Um, I hate to say it, but for that one though, I'm gonna go a little bit below average because it, it took a lot of skill, it took a lot of force, it, it took more than it should do to honestly to uh, really get the way to function. So for that reason, I'm gonna go with a two on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that. Actually, um, for the for the brief period of time that I did have it, it took a little bit of doing to get the blade to spin. You know, you kind of have to let it sink just a little bit, and then uh, give it a quick twitch, and then at that point, you know, that's when the blade starts spinning. Now, once the blade's spinning, it um, it basically I, what I could see from under the water is it, you know, the design or the design pattern on the one I had looked like a, like a minnow head or mm -hmm. something or like a fish head. Mm -hmm. And it, it made that look appear larger, right? Just because of the color pattern that was on that blade. But, um, yeah, it definitely, as far as its function, I mean, it did take some work to get it started. Um, I, I think that that's, I mean, with other spinner baits or maybe chatter baits or something like that, you'll run into a little bit of an issue where you'll see the blade just kind of stall out on you a little bit, and it takes a little bit of a twitch to get it going again. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's probably par for the course. I'll give that a three as well. The next on the list here is durability. How well did it hold up during the review? How'd yours hold up? I just want to start with him on this one. Actually. Uh, as far as I know, mine's <laughs> still in perfect shape at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> I honestly, mine held up fine. I mean, heck, I only caught one fish on there, but uh, I smashed it on a few rocks and everything. But uh, the way it, it, it's designed on there, you, you're gonna if when you run into some fish there, you're gonna you're gonna have some scratches and you're gonna lose some of the uh, uh, little whatever thing on the skirt material. material. Yeah, whatever that is there. And obviously, with a um, uh, paddle tail swim bait. It's kind of like a fluke. You're going to get some, obviously, some teeth marks on there and probably have to replace those. Uh, I mean, if you look at the thing, though, it's it's pretty darn cool. I mean, you got a lot of different features on there. You got the paddle tail swim bait, you got the skirt, you got the head of a shad or a little minnow looking thing, and then you got a blade on there. So they just pretty much packed a lot of things into <laughs> one lure, honestly. Yeah. But um, I mean, as far as it held up there, for me, it, it did fine. I didn't really lose 
much paint on there or anything. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go with average on that. I'll go with a three. I, I have no opinion on this <laughs> one. <laughs> I can't really answer the question of durability. My line definitely didn't hold up during the test. I I would imagine, I, based on Todd's results, I, I would say that it's probably par for the course as well. I, I think it's average. Um, I, he's absolutely right. There's a ton of things going on with that bait. It's like they took the best of everything out there and just put it all into one lure. Spinner baits, jig, uh, swim baits, you know, whatever it is. They, they took everything and just put it all into one bait. And um, it, it's a little confusing, maybe, just to kind of wrap your head around exactly what's going on with this thing. I think the fish think the same thing, Yeah, honestly. but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as far as its durability, like I said, I'm basing my result or basing my opinion off of what Todd's result was. So I'm I'm just gonna go with average on that too. Next, uh, usability. How easy is or how easy or hard is it to use the product? So, like I said, kind of with the functionality of it, it's there is a is a learning curve. I mean, it took me quite a few casts just to kind of get it to, to work properly, and even then, it didn't work you know great 100% of the time there. So. I think once you kind of get a handle on it, it's it's gonna it'll come in time. You just kind of have you'd have to be patient with it, honestly. Um, I'm tempted to go with a two on that one, but I'm gonna be a little friendly on that one. I'm gonna go with the average. I'm gonna go with right in the middle with a three. For me, when it comes to its usability, I didn't think it was terribly easy whatsoever. Um, it, I mean, again, I, I'm basing this off of like eight casts, but. Um, <laughs> It wasn't terribly easy. It did take a lot to get the blade motion going. Um, you could, I mean, I guess you could run it a number of ways, but it took a lot to get it going. Um, it wanted to climb uh, to the surface of the water yeah, on true. you. Yeah. It, it just, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was uh, terribly user friendly um, in comparison to say that of another spinner bait or. Uh, maybe a MEPS, I don't know. I've, I've never really fished a MEPS, but um, comparatively speaking to maybe like say a rooster tail, um, matter. I mean, if, if this is if this is going to be a lure that's designed to be cast, uh, you know, cast out and then just you know a steady retrieve, I, I don't know that it's terribly user friendly when it comes to that. It takes a little bit of work to get it started. So I'm, I'm actually going to go with a two. Uh, last on our scoring review here is um, effectiveness. Did it produce the expected results? Well, like we said multiple times in most of our videos here, you know, with any kind of lure, you want to be able to catch fish and hopefully big fish at that. We caught one fish on there, <laughs> to be honest. And um, you caught one. I fish. caught one fish on there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who knows? He he may have caught one. I, just, I, I, I set be... I set the hook on what might have been a fish or maybe a rock. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it broke my line. All right. I mean, I had some other bites on there, but again, it just one in the boat there. So. Again, I th another thing we say a lot is I think in the right uh, conditions and the right lakes, I, th I think this would be a great lure. I mean, I would love to use this up north in Wisconsin where we were vacationed. I think it'd be really good for uh, the musky and, and the northern because it kind of has the same concept as the uh, as the MEPS um, musky killer as well. And actually, on the review box like or the boxes, we said it, it does good in the saltwater too for uh, redfish and snook. And I I love fishing off the beach and catching those types of fish. So I'm, I'm probably going to use this in Florida, to be honest with you. So we may have to revisit this again. But again, for the purposes of this video and of today, um, it really didn't, to be honest. So I will go honestly with a two on that one. Uh, as far as its effectiveness for me, I don't have a big enough sample size. Uh, like I said, it, it didn't last very long for me. <laughs> so um, I, I would, uh, based on Todd's results I, I would tend to agree with him but I, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a three just because I don't think it's any better or worse than some of the other lures out there you know uh, some days it's just your day on that lure and then other days it's not there there's just so much going on with mm -hmm. it you know maybe maybe in this case more is not better you yeah I mean? like exactly yeah. there's a there's a simplicity I think that comes with maybe a jig or even a buzz bait or just a traditional spinner bait there's a, a simplicity that comes with that but as soon as I say that there's also spinner baits where you put trailers on them or buzz baits where you put the additional hook on or whatever it is you know I, I, so your uh, you know your mileage may vary when it comes to these but you know I, I don't think it's any better or worse than any other lure that we've tested here so i'll call it average give it a three yeah that's good yeah, yeah i mean it's a good concept i mean i think that's what it's just it's enticing it, it it looks like it's oh my gosh this is going to catch us a ton of fish on there that's probably why i bought it mm. and that's probably why other people buy it too and I, i've read some of the reviews on um, amazon things like that and they you know plenty of people catch fish on it but um 
again, maybe it's just the lake. I, you know, who knows? Or maybe it's they're just lying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could be either way. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. All right. All right, guys. So for what we do from here is we take the uh, the average of our two scores. Each of us are able to award as many as 25 possible points to the product that we've tested. Um, I'm going 14, and uh, I yeah, so I'm going 14 out of 25 on the uh, Hula Runner. What about you? Oh, thank God I don't do any math. 14 as well. All right, so that well, that's our average then. So 14 out of 25 it is. But guys, that's going to do it for us with the uh, Panther Martin Hula Runner. Appreciate you stopping by. Make sure to click like on the video for us. Let us know that you were here. Also, hit subscribe down below. We also we always appreciate your support on that. Of course, guys, if there's anything you want us to review in the future, uh, rods, reels, lures, jigs, and it is kind of late summer months, so uh, in a couple months here, we're going to be going back to uh, our uh, gun back, reviews. and um, Back to the woods. Yeah, back to the woods. Yeah. Hopefully some bow and arrows and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you so much again for stopping by. We're the KC Bass Guys. I'm Brandon. And I'm Todd. Y'all have a good one.